Sunreef is a point of reference in the multi-hull world. Over the past 20 years, it's built up a solid reputation for building high-end luxury catamarans, both sail and power. But eco-responsible cruising is now high on the list for most owners and boat builders are under pressure to respond. Enter the Sunreef 80 Eco, a yacht that combines luxury with sustainability in what Sunreef calls a green breakthrough. Just consider that this is a yacht that at slow speed at least can cruise almost indefinitely on renewable energy from sun, water and wind. And we're at the Cannes Yachting Festival to take a closer look at the first unit, christened Marie Joseph, which just happens to be owned by the brand founder, Francis Lapp. All people want to be more eco now, it's normal. Before boat, I think in the boat business, in, not body gives some direction to what we must do as shipyard to be eco. The Sunreef 80 Eco is very much an evolution of the Sunreef 60 Eco that was presented in Cannes three years ago, but it takes electric propulsion and smart energy management to the next level. Completely new, for example, are the 200 square meters of ultralight solar panels that you can see under my feet here that have been integrated into the composite hull, superstructure and even the mast using a system entirely engineered in-house. Sunreef, now all our product is going to the Eco line. All new product we built only in Eco. You not can buy a new 100 feet uh, in engine, normal engine. We will sold only in Eco. When you are in the cabin, you not feel you are on the engine, you are on the sailing, you hear nothing. Not vibration on the car, you have the wheels on the road, on the boat, nothing. And you said before that um, Sunreef production is totally focused on the eco boats yes. now. Of course, the technology is developing all the time. What's the next technological step for Sunreef? Uh, in electrical, you can say, okay, same like when you buy a TV today or in six months, it's not the same TV. When we launched the boat eight months ago, and today we, ha we have different battery. It's going uh, all two weeks, all two months, is changing the technology. Now, when we sold the boat for 2024, it's not writing in the contract what battery you have. Uh, this is one thing. Uh, second thing, we are also working on hydrogen. We have now the first order for a Sunreef uh, Eco, the same like this one, electrical hydrogen. You have an order? Yes, we have an order, yes. Wow, okay. So we are the first. <laughs> to hear, yes. An exclusive, guys. <laughs> yes. Scoop. Yes, yes. <laughs> The photovoltaic system has a peak power output of nearly 40 kilowatts per hour and wind-free propulsion comes from two 180 kilowatt electric motors. Energy can be stored in a 550 kilowatt lithium ion battery bank, which is good for both propulsion purposes and to power the house loads. Moreover, the Sunreef 80 Eco recovers energy from the passive rotation of the propellers in each hull using a hydro generation system able to produce up to 15 kilowatt hours when sailing over seven knots. Actually, uh, a few years ago, we say, okay, that does not exist on the market and we just uh, opened a team for uh, R&D and we started to think how we can integrate the solar panel into the actual shape of boat or the future shape of boat without compromising the design. And that's how we started. Uh, and on the top of that, of course, uh, we needed to do them strong because we wanted them to be everywhere and we needed to do them light and integrated. So that's how, let's say, we we started. You mentioned strength and robustness, of course, is, is very important because you have the solar cells not just on the, on the mast and the superstructure, but also on the sides of the hull, uh, where there's going to be banging and scraping against the dock. So how strong are they? Yeah, so we worked very hard to, 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 to make uh, the solar as strong as possible. And actually, our goal was to make them as strong as a normal hull 
because actually they are on the hull. And uh, we did some tests with the hammer, with some more uh, professional tools as well. But the first one was with the hammer. <laughs> literally banging it literally with the hammer. banging <laughs> with the hammer. And, uh, and the test went good. I mean, we just uh, scratched a bit the paint with the hammer like we would do on a normal hull. But after polishing it, uh, it was like new. Big uh, plus as well is that uh, as our technology allowed us to make the solar panel ultra thin that's for the integration, but therefore they are ultra light. And the total of the solar panel for the 34 kilowatt peak, they are less heavy than one genset, much less. You produce energy not just from the solar cells, but also hydro generation, for example. When you put together all these renewable energy systems, in practical terms, how much range or autonomy or speed at low speed does that give you? Yeah, f first of all, we are right now on a sailing boat. So when you are recovering energy, you're sailing. So actually you are doing, you're, you're going forward. So <laughs> you're moving your boat for free. And on the top of that, you are creating energy from the, uh, from the fact that you are moving with the, with the wind. Uh, so in this condition, you are able to be on the boat without one liter of fuel for how much time you want uh, using, of course, because that was very important using all of the house equipment. So uh, we are talking about air conditioning, cooking, uh, having guests on board, using water and all of the comfort that we expect on a boat of this size. And that's quite important as well. But enough tech talk for the moment, because I imagine you want to see what the Sunreef 80 Eco offers in terms of guest accommodation and amenities. So let's start here in the vast main salon. Now, anyone accustomed to a monohull is going to be blown away by the size of this space and the wraparound panoramic windows. The layout is completely flexible. In this case, Francis Lapp chose two extra large facing sofas, a high-low central dining table a bar area forward and even a piano. But I imagine celebrity customers like Rafael Nadal or Nico Rosberg have chosen slightly different solutions. The quality materials and finish, however, throughout are consistent with Sunreef's usual high standards. The hull layouts are also modular. On this unit, the aft end of the port side hull is taken up by a high-end galley and two guest cabins forward. The starboard hull houses the crew accommodation aft and the master and VIP suites forward. Naturally, the service area and guest accommodation are served by separate companionways. But Sunreef's pursuit of green tech continues on the inside with the HVAC system. As we all know, air conditioning is one of the biggest consumers on board. And so Sunreef uses a system that in terms of size, weight and efficiency is one of the most advanced available on the market. Yeah, actually, uh, after working on the production of energy, we had to think about uh, how to save uh, the usage of the energy. So we went through all of the system and we started, of course, with the AirVac, which was, the, let's say, number one in terms of consumption. So uh, we find out uh, a system where uh, we have a different technology. Uh, we have, for example, a titanium uh, part inside the air conditioning to have a better efficiency. But uh, we can say that even Comparing to the best air conditioning on the market, we are already 30% more or less more efficient. But if you compare with a classical air conditioning, like the, the one that, uh, that is most popular, we are, I think, 70% less uh, energy consumer because we are very much talking in the business about electric drive, electric drive, but quite nobody are talking right now about that we should save uh, the, the, the consumer as well. Well, that's an interesting point because part of sustainable living, whether at home or on a boat, is perhaps changing some of our habits, isn't it? Because we're very accustomed when it gets too hot, just flick a switch and the, uh, air, the air conditioning comes on. To what extent are your clients aware of that? And to what extent do you need to educate them uh, in this aspect? I would say that uh, there is uh, still an education to be done. There is some customer who want to be aware, 
but very often they forget. So what we are working right now, but that's more for the future. We are more working on how to ed educate or how to show the customer uh, what they use on the boat, just to make them aware. Because maybe even if the customer want to do these small things to use less, sometimes he does not really understand where are the savings. So that's what we are working for the for the future as well. Uh, your father mentioned that you've actually sold a, a hydrogen fuel cell boat. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, we sold the first, uh, let's say, 24 meter uh, boat, which will run with hydrogen. Uh, we are just at the start of the project, uh, but the boat will uh, be started to build in a few months. Uh, the idea is really to eliminate all of the fuel on the boat and to be able uh, later to create some hydrogen out of the seawater, thanks to the, all the green energy that we can have on the boat, uh, to be just like zero fuel uh, boat. So maybe in Cannes, in a couple of years time, we'll be able to see uh, the first Sun Reef hydrogen catamaran. Fantastic. Not forgetting the outdoor areas, of course. As we saw in the main salon, the catamaran configuration offers a vast amount of deck space, not just in the after cockpit, which is set up for al fresco dining, but also here on the foredeck, where apart from the traditional trampoline separating the two hulls, we have this very cool sunken dinette with sun pads and a Japanese style tatami table. And last but not least, the excellent visibility from up here on the flybridge makes it the place of choice for driving the boat in all but the hottest or most inclement weather. Apart from more lounging and dining space and open air galley, the owner chose to have a couple of exercise treadmills up here. It's just a shame they consume electricity rather than produce it. So all this green tech sounds fine in theory, but how does it work in practice? Well, the Sunreef 80 Eco comes with a sail wardrobe that includes a fully battened mainsail, a Genoa, a Genica, and a staysail for performances of about five knots in light airs, but more than double that in anything over 15 knots of breeze. But for the purposes of this video, we're more interested in the electric propulsion. And right now we're doing about seven knots on battery power alone. On the monitor in front of me, I can pull up all the information I need about the battery pack from the rate of charge or discharge to the voltage or temperature. At this kind of speed, the twin electric motors consume about 30 kilowatts per hour each. And the system's telling me that that's good for about eight hours of autonomous cruising without having to recharge. But it's not just about sustainability, is it? It's also about comfort. And in that sense, e-cruising is a little bit like sailing because I can't actually hear the electric motors. It's more like driving an electric car for the first time. So no noise, no vibration, and no engine fumes, whether you're underway or at anchor. Sustainability is a bit of a buzzword right now in yachting, but all too often the reality fails to live up to our expectations. The Sunreef 80 Eco, on the other hand, for my money at least, represents an exciting step forward along the road to an all-electric world of eco-responsible cruising. 